I'm Scott Allen Miller. It is the 27th of January 2023, and this is my vlog of daily life in Leon, Nicaragua. Okay, if you watched my episode a couple days ago, we went to Sutiava Airport, and when we came back from there, I came to this intersection. So I'm gonna turn the camera around and show you exactly where we are. This is the small, tiny road that we brought in from uh, southern Sutiava. This is the road that heads up the hill to the farm with the crazy power strung through the trees and the uh, quarry, which you're gonna see a little bit more information about on Tuesday. This is the cute yellow house that's up here. If you go down here, uh, Los Altos de Veracruz is down there, which is funny that the Heights is down there, but that's where it is. And where we are going today is we're going to see where this dog just came from. This is the road heading west towards a tiny, tiny, tiny Pueblo called uh, uh, Carlos Canales. And it's very hard to find on the map, but it does exist. And so we are just gonna head forward and go for a little walk today. This is not a long walk, uh, but it is, uh, it's good to get out and do my morning constitutional. And that is what we are doing. And we're simply discovering where this goes. Now, when I look on the map, this is a, a road that has like, the little village has like one intersection. So we're not expecting much at all. This is gonna be tiny, but it's a little country road that goes someplace with a name, and that makes it worth investigating, and that is what we are doing. Last night, we had so much fun going to the concert. Uh, we, we were a little bit exhausted just from it being um, a week of doing a lot of things, and we've, we've stayed way too busy both between work and going out night after night. We just, none of us have gotten a lot of sleep, so we're all a little bit rough today, but, uh, Work went okay and uh, everything. And this evening, uh, we kept it relatively low key. We headed out to uh, Gakitos again uh, and just went out and did uh, karaoke, which we're just, we're just really enjoying. Um, it was interesting tonight when we did karaoke that uh, I tried doing a little bit more of an obscure country song and they put it on, but there wasn't any words. And I'm like, I, that just does not work. I cannot do that. All right, so I'm gonna really quickly, I have no idea, this has to be like a farm, but there's pavers. Like they took the time to put in like this nicely paved space and there's a huge, I can only imagine that's like a, a chicken farm or something back there, but there's clearly people and stuff going on, but it's a huge building, but with the pavers and everything, that could easily be made into like a, a, uh, 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 like a little restaurant kind of thing, but no one would be able to get here. Like it's such a ridiculous location. So we are walking seriously through the country. I hope this is actually a road. It's so weird that this is what Google Maps puts down as a road. Like how many people drive cars back here and go, Google, what are you doing to me? Right, on foot, it's almost a problem. Yeah. Oh yeah, the path continues. We're okay, but this is nuts. This dog is like, why is there a person here? There's never a person here. Yeah. This path is not worn down by humans, it's worn down by the dogs. This is one of the things that I think is most interesting about life in Nicaragua is that there are whole villages that are accessible primarily by paths like this. Because this is the official road. This is the main way to this village. So I talked to the, the general manager of the, of, of Gekidos. Buenos dias. Whew. Again, I'm on, I'm on rough terrain in sandals. It's very foolish. I'm filming some of these things out of order. Uh, it, to put them in actual damage to my foot order, uh, I actually did the walk to Sutiava Airport a couple days ago, uh, three days ago, and I did the, uh, I have other walks that I've done since then that you haven't seen yet. I'm wildly out of order. And then this walk is a two days after that. So I'm three days after. Uh, I, so I've stressed my foot a lot, but it's doing okay at the time that I'm doing this walk. And this, this type of terrain, though, is very rough. I'm in sandals, and there's bricks and stones and uneven ground. And I can't go wide because there's barbed wire next to me. I'd rather not rub my shoulder against that and have to get a tetanus shot today. So trying not to fall over. 
And this is a very awkward path to go down, especially carrying the camera. So sorry that it's bouncing all around. So anyway, I talked to the general manager of Gekitos and I'm like, yeah, it's pretty hard to sing the karaoke when there's no words. He's like, yeah, I talked to the karaoke DJs about that. So hopefully they'll put a little bit more effort into it next time. We've, we've enjoyed doing karaoke, but the, uh, the night that I did um, the video for uh, Bust a Move, I had gone in and tried to do another song and instead of playing the song I requested, they played Bust a Move again. Like they paid no attention and just played the same song twice. And instead of fixing it, they just let it play. So I had to perform that song twice, but of course everyone had just heard it 30 minutes before. And I'm like, this is really dumb. And it's kind of embarrassing because it makes people go, did he just order that song twice? Like it's stupid. I was trying to do two different songs and instead had to do the same way. Uh, that, was, that was dumb. And of course mistakes happen. But that, uh, the very next time I tried to do a song, it was, well, I did one song in between. Uh, so I did two songs, well, Bust a Move twice the other night. I have another dog barking at us over here. Why is everybody barking at me? And oh, suddenly the, the road is much wider. Why is it wide here? Where does the traffic go when you come up on this wide road? Nowhere, because it turns into a little walking path. Um, and... Uh, uh, so I was able to do Ice Ice Baby because it was by request, but then I tried to do a country song and they played it with no words. So my my success rate with them actually giving me things that I can use uh, at at Gekitos is really close to 50%. It's uh, it's a little bit tough. Oh, you're barking at me. Oh, do you get a puppy here? Hello, puppy. Yeah. The nice thing here is dogs would very rarely get run over here on these paths that you can't possibly get a car to. So that's interesting. This is this is. Very obviously, this is where the paths were before the road was put in, before anyone had cars. Uh, and then, what is this? Oh, we have another doggy here who's quiet. We never get a quiet dog. What a nice dog. Uh, and so, so a lot of these communities grew up in a carless world, and they have remained carless uh, because they, it works right? Um, so much of life here can be done on foot. So much is delivered by tricycle or whatever, or hand carts like you see in front of me that uh, you don't need a whole lot of things. Now, what I don't see here are power lines, but I do hear people with power. So there's power coming in somehow. Um, these may be power lines we see up above strung on things. I don't know. Uh, actually, that's pretty likely. Maybe. I don't know. Um, so somehow there's some power getting out here, but it's, it's certainly, certainly limited. This is a very interesting walk. Uh, this is the kind of stuff that I think is really neat just discovering new like communities and, and everything. And it's also interesting to think like these houses, of course, a lot of houses here in a country as old as this are built more than a hundred years ago. And so the idea that you were building it with cars and trucks and all that is, is already a uh, foreign idea. What is this? But, uh, you know, also a lot of these houses today may have been built uh, without cars recently. Hello, horsey. And of course, horse-drawn carts. This is very realistically how people get things in and out here, because uh, there's horses. And it's, it's amazing how many people live along these carless roads. I mean, it's not a ton of people, obviously, but that there's a number of people around and life going on and you can walk by and, and run into everybody out listening to music and talking to their neighbors and everything is kind of amazing. What is this? So this is, I'll just point out real quickly what we're looking at here. This is the road leading out to Nicaragua 14 that is Cerro de Oro. That is the largest mountain or hill in the region. Uh, and it looks here we have some hills in between, but it goes down. There's a river in between here and there. So that is farther away than it looks. Of course, on the GoPro, it does look pretty far away. Uh, here, it actually looks pretty approachable. Like, oh, that's not far. I could just, uh, I could just hop right over there. And if you actually, this is a gorgeous view. I got to okay, that's a big spider web. I'm going to try not to have that spider crawl on me. We're going to walk over here and a lot of brambles. Okay. Cerro de Oro, right over here. And then this, this is a really clear view. I love this. That is San Cristobal, the volcanoes at uh, Chinandega. So if 
if you're looking at a map, that's how far away that is. That is all the way on the northeast side of the city of Chinandega. That is the volcano that when Paul and I were here in uh, April two years ago that erupted while we were here. And wow, something got me on the leg. Hold on. Oh, lots of stupid little plant things. Just a plant, not like an animal. Just something poked me. Oh, we have a guy on a horse coming through this beautiful field. This is a beautiful spot. This is a spot where you could film something like a movie could easily be filmed here with the, the volcanoes and the mountains in the background and the open field and people riding horses through the pastures. This is just picturesque in an amazing way. I'm liking this spot, this particular, I'm gonna come back here sometime with a tripod and set up and do the show just with that beautiful field behind me. All right, I'm continuing on. I don't know how far I'm gonna go on this particular part because I, I really wanted to come down to that intersection. That was Carlos Canales there. This road in front of me, which goes along this beautiful pasture land, uh, is supposed to continue on quite some distance. I'm gonna bring up the map while I'm talking and go on to the village of Cristobal Caballero. And that makes sense that we have these guys out here on horses because Caballero uh, refers to um, horse riding gentlemen, right? So that village is just that way. And we did show the village there um, from Nicaragua 14 on a previous episode. Now, only showed it from the highway. One of these days, I'm gonna walk down there uh, and show that one. It's got a lot more population than here. Obviously, this is just a handful of houses, just enough to have a, uh, a name on the map. But uh, down there, uh, there's like a church and there's some pulperias and stuff. I don't see any pulperias out here. That's, that's when you know you're small. Uh, we do have someone coming up on a motorcycle, though, so it's not completely devoid of traffic. But boy, this field is good. So that was our Friday. Uh, we just did, um, oh, oh, and uh, <clears throat> a lot of our friends came out. So Alan and Anna came to karaoke and Jazzy and Thea came to karaoke and we ran into Helday, uh, who says hi to Cat <laughs> at karaoke. And uh, let's turn the camera around and get this beautiful country lane that we're walking down. This is just gorgeous. What a, what a great spot for the morning. And, uh, and that was our Friday. And this, oh, something bit me on the leg. Ow. I'm okay. That's, it doesn't happen too often, but every so often something bites me when I'm out doing these walks and it's like, oh. Uh, so yeah, that is, our, that is our day. A little bit of exercise, a little bit of adventures exploring here in Nicaragua. Sorry, not a, not a big uh, exciting topic a day or anything. Oh, here's a little trail going off into the middle of nowhere. Who knows what's back there? And really look at this trail, right? It's only so much smaller than some of the roads. Oh, more people out in this pasture working. Every one of these little roads is something, something kind of interesting. I think when we, when we look at the maps and when you drive around, you kind of imagine that all these fields are going to be empty. Maybe that's just me. Maybe, maybe that's not something that, that other people feel, but so often, uh, especially when we're driving through Nicaragua, right? A lot of times when driving through Nicaragua, you just you see these wide open fields and it feels like you're in the middle of nowhere and that no one's ever around and that it's just, it's just wild abandoned countryside. Um, but the reality is, I think it's just, there's a lot fewer uh, buildings and farm implements and equipment out in those fields than we're used to. Uh, and a lot of these places are actually pasture land or active farmland or being churned over. And it just, it's just a feeling that we get rather than the reality. And sorry, my camera died right at the end. So I just wanted to finish up that thought, but that was, our walk for the day. I hope you enjoyed that. For everyone, please get down in those comments, like and subscribe. Let us know what you're thinking, uh, anything going on, any questions you have about things that we're doing and things that you want me to do. Down there in those comments helps a lot. Remember to like, and uh, if you'd like to support the channel, you can buy me a coffee uh, that uh, just goes directly to me. You can uh, buymeacoffee.com slash Scott L. Miller. And of course, share on social media, and I will see all of you tomorrow.